All right. Hey, everybody. We're going to take a look at Lesson 6-6 six, six today, which is geometric sequences. Now, in the past, we've talked about arithmetic sequences, which was adding. Well, geometric sequences are multiplying. Now, we talked about this a little bit last week when finding different sequences. So just a quick review. Arithmetic sequences, that's when we add. We can add a negative or add a positive. And it comes with a common difference. It's how we find our patterns. And we use the letter D to represent that common difference. Now, geometric sequences we find by multiplying or dividing. But remember, we don't divide. We're actually multiplying by a fraction. So when we do geometric sequences, we're always multiplying. And there, we find a common ratio, which is what we're multiplying by, and we use the letter R. Now, looking at these sequences, what do we see? Well, in order to go to each sequence here, I am multiplying by three, so that means here, this is a geometric sequence. And in this case, my R equals now, looking over here, I actually have a difference of negative 5, so I'm adding negative 5 to each side. So this is an arithmetic sequence. And that's where I use the common difference, D. My common difference here is negative 5. All right, it is your turn. Hit pause. Try the next three your turns. When you're finished, hit play to check your work. All right, how'd you do? The first one is arithmetic, which is the common difference of negative four. Second one is geometric, because we've got a common ratio of one eighth. We're dividing by one eighth, or multiplying, or dividing by eight, or multiplying by one eighth. And the last one, there's not a common difference or a common ratio, so it is neither. Taking a look at example two, let's find the next three terms of each geometric sequence. So the first thing I want to do is find the common ratio. So to get from here to here, here to here, it looks like my numbers are getting smaller, so I know I'm going to multiply by a fraction, and it turns out my common ratio here is one-third. So when I find my next three terms, 36 times one-third, is 12, 12 times one third is four, four times one third is four thirds. Leave that as a fraction. Do not turn that into a reading decimal. Now here, if you notice, positive, negative, negative, positive, positive. So what are we doing here? So here, this is letting me know I have to multiply by a negative. So if I do a positive times a negative, it's negative. Negative times a negative is positive. So here, my common ratio is negative 2. When I multiply 56 by negative 2, I get 112. Multiply that by negative 2, I get negative 224. Multiply this by 2, and I get 448. Well, what does this look like when we graph? And of course, I got a little typo here. So what do you notice? Now, this right here is my, this is the first term, so we're going to call this position one. Position two, three, four, and five. And the term, that's 6, 12, 24, 48, and 96. Now, one of the things, notice this is A of N, my first term. So, my first term is 6, and it is A to the a second, or A to the two, oh my gosh, <laughs> 12, my third term is 24, my common ratio here is I'm multiplying by two. So let me see, and let's track this. So I've got 1, 6, 2, 12, 3, 24, 4, 48, and 5, 96. Now, should I connect these points? Uh, no, because I can't have one and a half positions. Like the Olympics are going on right now. Can't have first place, 
second place and one and a half place, although that might be the only way I'd get on the podium there is if we had halves. So this is a discrete function. Do not connect those coordinates. So if you look, it appears that this is exponential. The points appear to be exponential. Now, all right, it cut off here, I apologize. Write the next three terms of the geometric sequence and then graph the sequence. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to find the next three terms and graph those and see what happens. Go ahead, hit pause. When you're done, hit play and we'll take a look. Okay, if we take a look here, I've got my exponential function increasing. This one, my r is a fraction. So my exponential curve is going the other way. Now, if you notice, my common ratio here was negative one half. So look at what the points did. I've got points above and below the x axis for both of these. See, I can kind of see my exponential curve here, a curve here, curve here, and curve here. Let's talk about these exponential functions here for a minute. So let's say I have a first term of one and then a common ratio of five. That means I'm gonna multiply by five each time. Well, if you notice, my first term here is just one. I'm not multiplying by five here. Now, my second term is five times this one. This one, so I've got one times five. My third term is one times five times five. My next term is one times five times five times five. Now, if you notice, this is my second term, third term, and fourth term. Notice I have one less five than the number of terms. So this is my fourth term. I've got three fives. So this, think about it this way. Five to the first, this right here is the second term minus one. Three minus one, four minus one. So the fourth term minus one gives me those three fives, because each new number I'm multiplying by five. So we end up with a pattern that looks like this. Where did that come from? If I want to use my nth term, it's going to look just like this. So if I have, let me zoom in here for a minute. So I would end up with a to the n, that's any term, which is my first term, times my common ratio, whatever term minus one, that goes back to this right up here. This was my fourth term, I had three fives. So my 19th term, I would have 18 fives. So here is my first term. Here is the common ratio. Right? So if I look here, a of one is three. That's the first term. Well, how do I go from here to here, here to here, and here to here? It's my common ratio multiply by four. So now what is my equation gonna look like? Well, if I have a to the n equals a to the one times r to the n minus one, minus one, let's, what do we know? So I have a to the n, my first term is three, my common ratio is four, so here is my equation. Now I want to find the tenth term. So I have a ten, so I have three times four to the ten minus one. Don't forget that. So my tenth term is three times four to the ninth power. Remember order of operations, exponents first. So my tenth term is seven hundred. 86,432. All right, now go ahead and try these next four on your own. This time you're doing it for a to the seventh. All right, 
Let's take a look. How did you do? Number eight, you should have had 15,625. Remember, really should have put parentheses here. Don't forget your parentheses, just like I did. So 15,625. Nine, you end up with 832. Now, for 10, I did get a fraction answer here. That's how I chose to solve it. But if you had a decimal, that's okay. Now, for 11, yeah, I ended up with a decimal here. 976 and 5,625 ten thousandths. So let's take a look at a function here. So clicking the zoom out button on a map website doubles the length of a square map. So how many clicks on the zoom out button is the side length for a map 5,120? Now, I'll be honest, I apologize. I've left out some really important information. Now, it doubles, that lets me know that my common ratio is R, but I don't have a first term here, so I'm going to fill in this for you, and I apologize for leaving this off the handout. So zoom out, click, so after one click, it's five miles, two clicks, it's ten, three clicks, it's twenty. So this is the map side length in miles. So I know that my first term here is 5. Now in this case, I don't actually have a term number. I have a solution. So let's go ahead and write our equation first. So I have a to the n equals a to the first r n to the first. Now this is a function, so I'm going to change this to f of n. 5 times 2 n minus 1. Now I have 5,120 miles. Next, I want to solve for one. Now, if you recall from previous lessons, in order for us to solve here, I need an exponent. Okay? So we need a common base to do that. So I'm going to get this side by itself. So I just have a base and an exponent. I divide both sides by five. So I have 1,024 equals 2 to the n minus 1. Now, in order to solve for n, I need a common base. And 1,024 is the same as 2 to the 10. So now that I have common bases, I know my exponents have to be equal, the same value. Solve for n. n equals 11. So that means my final answer here is it takes 11 clicks. Nice job, everybody.